What is up, YouTube? Wow, it's been a little while, hasn't it? Where the heck have I been? <sighs> Weird. No, I've, uh, man, it's just been busy. Um, haven't got to fish much, haven't got to film much, and uh, that really sucks. And I apologize for that. I know, you know, um, I know you guys expect that and expect to see more videos out of me, and um, I expect to see more out of it, videos of me too. And uh, just haven't been able to recently, but hopefully soon we'll be back on it and get on a good schedule and get some more videos up. Uh, but today, uh, a lot of folks have asked for this and uh, have been curious. Today, I just want to do a quick kind of comparison slash review of the Pelican Catch 120 versus my new kayak, which is the Jackson Cuda 12. So I'm gonna lay out kind of some fundamentals, some stuff on paper, specs, and then I'm gonna give you just kind of an honest review of uh, both the kayaks, in my opinion, since I've owned both. So stay tuned, hope this helps, and thanks for watching. All right, so it's real simple. So uh, let's pretty much just get into it real quick. I'm gonna just do, I've got kind of a, a list out here, and uh, I'm gonna compare them on paper real quick, and then give you some of my thoughts. So on paper, uh, the catch is anywhere from about seven to eight hundred dollars. The Cuda is going to range anywhere from about twelve hundred to fourteen hundred dollars. Now that's retail. Uh, the Cuda I bought brand new. The catch I bought used. So if you're looking online, you're looking used. Um, obviously, you can find a better deal. And sometimes, depending on where you buy from, promotional deals, sales, things like that, you can find them from good deals, brand new. The catch is eleven foot eight, and the Cuda is twelve seven. The catch is thirty four inches wide. The Cuda is thirty one inches wide. Both have high and low seating. The catch has a 400 pound weight capacity. The Cuda has a 350 pound weight capacity. Uh, they're both, just for film's sake, they're both roughly 70 pounds without the seat uh, dry weight. Both have two flush mount rod holders. Uh, the catch has a front hatch. The Cuda has a front and rear hatch. Now I think the newer catches may have a rear hatch. I'm not sure, mine didn't. So I'm going off based off of mine. Uh, both have adjustable foot pegs. Uh, the Cuda also has a center hatch. Uh, it also has gear tracks to put like GoPro mounts, uh, RAM mounts, things like that, um, which is a very cool feature. Um, the Cuda also has a rod tip protector up front, so if you're paddling through thick pads or weeds or something, you can put your rod tips up in there and uh, not worry about them getting snapped or anything like that. Uh, yeah, the Cuda has GoPro and RAM inserts, um, so I have like a GoPro mount that was built in up front that I can uh, put a GoPro mount in, which is pretty cool. Both have stand assist straps. Um, the catch has a large open cockpit uh, for standing. Now you can stand in the Cuda as well, but it does have a large center hatch, so there's not as much open room uh, to stand up. So uh, the catch does have a very more, uh, a much more open cockpit um, for, for, for standing. Uh, both have drain plugs. Um, both have, uh, well no, sorry, the catch doesn't have a standing pad. The Cuda has a standing pad, kind of a nice, uh, just, kind of water resistant uh, marine type pad, which is nice. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? The Cuda has a skid plate, which is nice. So if you're dragging your kayak um, through, you know, mud, dirt, maybe a little bit of concrete here and there, eventually if it gets too roughed up or dinged or damaged, you can replace that skid plate. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, let's see, the Cuda is also rudder ready, which is a nice feature if you want to put a ruddy, uh, rudder ready. A rudder. Uh, or an anchor trolley, uh, nice feature. The uh, Cuda does not, or the catch does not come uh, rudder ready, as far as I know. Um, the Cuda, uh, my experience, had much. They now both kayaks have ha four handles all around. The Cuda had much more, has much more sturdy handles to me than the catch. The catch has handles, but they're kind of flimsy. Uh, to me, they were anyways. Whereas the catches are very solid, very sturdy. Now, um, the catch has kind of a rounded front tunnel hole, so it's very uh, kind of flat hole with, you know, humps like a tunnel, kind of like a pontoon boat. And the, uh, the Cuda is kind of a V design in the front um, with a flat hole. So the, the, to me, the V hole uh, definitely slices the water a little bit better and it's gonna be quicker versus the catch, which is a flatter tunnel hole and a rounded front. So those are just kind of some things on paper, you know, just schematics and details offline. You can look all that stuff up if you type in uh, both model kayaks and look both of those up. Um, and there's probably a few, there's quite a few that I, that I neglected to mention, you know, like paddle holders, uh, 
bungee cords, things like that. But for basics, that's kind of some of the layout. So now, we're gonna talk about my review of both what I like, what I didn't like, so on and so forth. So, here we go. So now, as we get into this, I want you guys to know, I'm not gonna bash either of these kayaks because I, I loved my Catch-120 and I love my Kuda 12. Both great companies, I'm not gonna bash either kayak, both great kayaks, so this isn't gonna be a bash fish if that's what you're looking for. I'm not gonna be like, oh, this one is so much better, you need to buy this one because uh, you shouldn't buy the other one, whatever. You know how reviews go sometimes, this isn't what that is. So basically, uh, as you guys have seen, I had quite a few videos with the Catch-120. Awesome kayak, super, super stable, man. I stood in that thing with absolutely no problem at all. Had no concerns to just stand right up. Um, I could flip and pitch out of that kayak super easy. I love that feature about it. I could set the hook set. Set the hook set? I could set the hook uh, while standing um, with no problem. So that was a great feature. Uh, fairly lightweight. Um, I like the high and low seating. Um, it was just, you know, it was a really good kayak. I really think it's a great kayak for small water. You know, ponds, small lakes, you know, maybe some backwaters, things like that. Uh, the thing that I struggle with the most with that kayak, the, the Catch-120, and this could have been partly because of my paddle as well, to me it was very slow. Um, it tracked pretty well. Uh, if you don't know that term in kayaking, that just means, you know, when you paddle left or right, is how straight the kayak stays as you're paddling left and right. Does it veer way right? Does it veer way left? And in this case, the catch the catch tracked pretty well. But uh, to me, it, w it was very slow. I had a hard time keeping up with Joe, and Joe has the Pelican Premium Forcer, I think, Premium and Forcer 120, I think is what it's called. And um, I had quite a bit of trouble keeping speed with him, and he just looked relaxed, man. He was just paddling along, like, geez, man, slow down. So that was a big factor for me, and even paddling with other anglers, um, the catch really seemed to um, lack in that area. And there's a give and take there. It's 34 inches wide. Keep that in mind, it's also a tunnel hole, so it's not designed necessarily to be a fast kayak. So you can't necessarily dog it for being a little bit slower when it's not designed to be a streamlined fast kayak. But that was one of my issues over time is that um, I wanted to cover water and I wanted to cover water faster and I wasn't able to do that in the catch. Even though it was super stable and I loved that, I wanted something I could cover water with a little bit faster and that was really my biggest motivation for getting rid of it. Other than that, um, I really loved that kayak. Uh, another kind of complaint, if I had to say one, was that it did seem to catch in the wind pretty bad at times, but that's also because it was a wider kayak. It did have a, a higher gunnels kind of on the side. Um, so, you know, respectively, it's, it's going to catch in the wind a little bit more, so that, you know, that's understandable. But really, overall, the, the catch was a great kayak. Like I said, if you're going to be fishing small waters or you're new to kayaking and you're looking for something that's really stable that you're going to get comfortable and confident on, the catch is a great kayak. Um, so, yeah, and I do miss it at times because the stability was just outstanding, but getting into my new kayak, the Jackson Cuda 12, freaking awesome. I love it. Um, I can stand very well in it. Um, I stand, I hook set, um, just about everything I've done in the catch, but I do have to be a little bit more careful because it is three inches narrower, so it's not quite as stable and I don't have as much foot room because of the large center hatch. So the stability isn't quite as good as the catch, but it's still uh, very good for somebody who's confident and standing and um, you know has, has fairly good balance. So it is stable and I do like that. Uh, tracks great, super maneuverable, and it's definitely uh, quite a bit quicker, which I really, really like because I can cover water faster. Um, so that I love. Um, of course, the color schemes too. The Cuda comes in a ton of different colors. You know, these are nitpicky things. Cuda comes in a ton of different colors. The Catch comes in, I think, two or three maybe. Um, you know, really at the end of the day, the color is just going to be personal preference. It's not not that big a deal. But um, the Cuda so far has been great. I like the, the uh, kind of marine mat that it has. Um, that seems to be pretty hardy. Um, of course, the, the center hatch is great. I'd love to fill that center hatch with all my plastics. Um, I'll just bring a big, you know, carry bag. I'm gonna get down to my kayak, I'll line all my, my soft plastics in there, and then when I'm fishing, boom, just open that hatch, grab a new, whatever plastics I'm gonna use, and I'm good to go. Put a pair of pliers in there, put your drinks in there, put your snacks in there. Um, it, it's very handy, I really like that feature. Has lots of little bungee cords here and there to help hold your paddle, pair of pliers, a stakeout pole. It actually has 
kind of um, these molded fittings on the side for a push pole or a, a stakeout pole, which is nice. Um, like I mentioned on paper, in comparison, the, uh, the CUDA 12 also has a rod tip protector, so that's nice. Um, high and low seating, the seat is super comfortable, great seat that has a bag on the back as well to put pliers, snacks, accessories, things like that. Um, one thing I will say that I have noticed, not a huge deal, but my st a standard milk crate, um, I bought a Yak Gear milk crate from Academy, does not fit in the back of the CUDA 12. It will fit, but there's some other additional rails molded in the back where the crate sits and it hits those, so it kind of teeter-totters. Um, the catch just had a huge space back there to put. Uh, you can pretty much fit any size milk crate you want back there, so I'm gonna have to modify mine probably a little better, figure out a better way to fit it, but at the end of the day, not really that big a deal to me, because um, I'm really just trying to take the essential tackle that I'm gonna need, so uh, not a deal breaker at all. So at the end of the day, guys, there's there's pros and cons to each. The, the Jackson is gonna be about twice as much in a retail setting used. It's probably gonna still be in the neighborhood of three or four hundred dollars more used than a used Pelican, I would say. Uh, it just depends where you're looking, how used it is, the kind of conditions it, it's in, things like that. Uh, for a new angler, um, you know, depending on your price point, that's gonna that's gonna sway it too. You know, if you're a brand new angler and you'd rather have the Jackson, well, the Jackson's about double the Pelican, so you may have to start off with the Pelican. Um, or you may even start off with something different. These are just two that I wanted to compare because people have been asking about them. And um, really, at the end of the day, both fantastic kayaks. Um, I love both. I love the Pelican. I love my Jackson. Um, I know the new owner of the Pelican. He absolutely loves it. He's been having a blast with it. Um, so really, both great kayaks. I'm not going to dog either. Both good companies. Um, yeah, I just, you know, the Pelican was great, but it just, it, right now, for what I wanted to do, covering more water and exploring new territory and things like that, it wasn't getting me there as quick as I wanted to, and that was really the biggest reason I switched. Other than that, I would have kept it because um, the stability, like I keep mentioning, is fantastic. If, I, if I'm ever in a position someday where I'm close to like some small ponds or I live on a small lake or small pond, I, I would consider picking up a used catch again someday because standing is just no problem at all. It was great. So, I hope that kind of clears the water a little bit for some of you guys who um, were wondering about both kayaks. I love both, both are great. Um, if you have any other questions, go ahead and just give me a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you. If you're looking at you know, more specific detail specs on paper, you know, just go to the company's website of each kayak and check them out and, and compare. But at the end of the day, if you're looking for strict stability, I would say catch. If you're looking for something a little bit faster, still has decent stability, I would say the CUDA 12. Uh, the CUDA 12 definitely has more accessories and ability to put things on uh, stock, so right out of the box. The catch, you can put a lot of stuff on, but it doesn't have gear tracks and ram mounts and GoPro mounts, things like that. But that can always be added, you know, with kayak modifications. It's, uh, I, I mean, endless. You can do so many things. So, uh, anyway, sorry I've been gone. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, too, I know there hasn't been a tournament, and I'm sorry for that. Joe and I schedules just haven't really aligned lately and we're hoping to get one up before summer ends. So bear with us. If you follow our social medias, we'll definitely announce it on there if we get something going. So um, hope you guys enjoy the video. Like I said, if you got questions, comments, concerns, anything, holler at me below and I'll try to get back to you. So as always, take care, tight lines, and thank you for watching. Why are you basking sun and ball? Why are you still here? I don't know why you're still here. The video's over. The review's over, that's it. All right.